Welcome to Komatsu's presentation on 3D job site tips base station setup best practices. Please note that all information shared is copyright protected. We want to support your business and operations during these uncertain times and beyond. Please check out more resource tips from our experts on Komatsu's Resource Center website page. In this presentation, you will learn about benefits of adding 3D technology to your fleet and basic steps to consider before setting up a base station. Now we would like to introduce Ron Schroeder's Product Manager for Smart Construction. Hello, my name is Ron Sweeters, and I'll be leading you through the 3D job site setup tips today. Uh, my background, I've been with Komatsu America since 2011 as a product manager on the intelligent machine controlled dozers and excavators, and I'm proud to to help our distributors and customers try to apply this technology and find that next productivity edge. Thanks for joining us and learning a little bit more about setting up your 3D job site. But before I begin into the technical details and suggestions on setting up a base station, I'd like to briefly discuss some of the reasons and benefits customers have been seeing from investing in this type of technology for the last 20 years. In general, it starts with trying to be more competitive. This technology can improve and transform some old or legacy processes. This can help control surveying and material cost and yields. Technology can help a customer get to grade quicker, more accurately with less passes, which can add up to less wear and tear on one of your most valuable assets, your machines. But in general, it's just a better, more efficient utilization of your assets. With some additional benefits that Customers have also seen as it can help lessen that labor skill gap that is prevalent in our industry, can help attract new and younger employees to their companies, and in general, just improve the operator's work environment. And with some pretty impressive payback periods, it's been proven that this technology can clearly help a customer's business. I'd like to continue on on some basic background and help define 2D and 3D machine control systems and some of the requirements for each. So if we get started with 2D, a 2D machine control system is typically monitoring the vertical plane, either in a flat or a sloping plane. These systems, the machine position is monitored either by a group of angle sensors strategically mounted on the machine to understand the current machine position or a group of sensors plus a rotating laser as a vertical reference. The known machine, machine, known machine position sorry, is then compared to a target design. This target design in a 2D system is typically defined by the user in the field right there in the display of the system. If we compare and contrast that to a 3D system, so a 3D system, so we know the three dimensions, that extra dimension that is now known is that horizontal position. So now the horizontal position of the machine is now known. Typical 3D machine control systems, that horizontal position is defined by a group of angle sensors or IMUs plus GNSS antennas, but or um, you can do IMUs and angle sensors with a robotic total station as your correction source. But with a GNSS or GPS system, that raw GPS signal is not enough. So that base station will serve as a correction source. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the upcoming slides. Additionally, the 3D system, 
typically there is a 3D model that is that is used and created prior to use. And the distance limitations are, are not as great with a, a 3D system. So we talked about some of the requirements in a correction source for a 3D system. So let's move along in this journey and understand a little bit more about that correction source, which is sometimes called a base station. So let's take a look at how a system using a base station, how it all works together. In the previous slide, I mentioned a machine with GNSS antennas as to monitor the machine position needs some type of correction source. And the base station is serving as a correction source for the machine. A machine without a base station, without a correction source, with antennas and sensors on the machine without a base station would be about as accurate as 100 feet or the size of a, a blue whale. But for construction applications, we're looking to get that vertical accuracy down to about a golf ball or, or about a tenth of a foot. So let's look at the concept of a base station, how it works. And this concept is basically called RTK or real-time kinematic. So that means we're going to get real-time position while you're moving. So the concept works with you must place a base station, which is a base station is a GNSS antenna and a receiver in a fixed or known location. So that fixed and known location can be set by um, starting the base station using software or on the panel with a, re, a GPS receiver. But basically what you're going to tell the receiver is you're here and now here's your known position. So now when the base antenna and receiver see that satellite signal that is coming from satellites that are 10 to 12,000 miles up in space and that, that signal is inherently distorted or wrong, as time goes on, that signal each second or so, that signal may be over here, it may be over here, and it's not in, there's some inherent error. So now that the base station is in a known location, that base station is now going to correct that inherent error of that raw GPS signal. And that correction is now stored in the receiver. And then it is going to be broadcast out via a radio signal to all the machines and rovers on site to use as a correction information. And some of the principles that make this work is that the base station must see the same amount of satellites as the machine and must be within range of that radio signal. And that starts to come into play when we look at some of the principles in setting up your base station. So let's start looking at some principles of setting up your base station properly. Now that we have understand the basic how a station works. Let's take a look at some typical examples of base stations you will see in the field. And if we look at this left image, this is a modular type base station where the components are separated. We've got the GNSS antenna, the GNSS receiver, and the radio all separated out. And to contrast this example here, we've got the antenna, receiver, and radio all combined into one unit. And both base stations will function very, very similar, but it's more about the form and the use case, depending on what type of mounting location and, and your preference of what type of base station you like, either a modular or an all-in-one type of unit. Let's compare and contrast the mounting locations of these two. So this is set up on a permanent base station type, or this is a 4x4 four four post that's going to stay in the same location every day, and this antenna and this horizontal position is going to stay in the same location. Contrasting this one where this base is set up over a point, it would be set up every day, and there may be some setup required every day. So I just wanted to give you some examples of base stations you'll see in the field. 
Some other considerations that must be made if you look at the radio type. So the base station, when they're manufactured, have a certain type of radio. Um, the two most common today are a UHF type and a 900 megahertz type. And you must understand what the machine's uh, radio it has that it's going to receive from this signal. So those must, must, uh, must be matched up, sorry. And t in today's world, interoperability, so depending on your base station brand, most machines out there can work with its base station. So uh, look with your provider to understand that your base station can uh, work with the machine type you're looking to uh, look at. And for some further learning, you can look at some options besides having a, a permanent base station or a, a, a base station that's set up daily. There's some other options to get correction sources, um, real-time networks or a virtual reference uh, systems. And I, I encourage you to look at those options. They have some advantages um, that you may be helpful for your application. But I want to focus on the base station next and to help keep your job site and some setup principles that will really help you to consider when setting up your base station when you're starting your job site from scratch on day one that'll keep you productive from day one till completion. So let's take a look at you're ready to set up your base station on day one of your job site. Where do you put it? It's a very important question, and we want to look back and, and talk about a GNSS friendly location. What does that mean? That it means you want to put your base station in an area that is most visible to the sky. And let's let's look at an example to understand why that's so important. Say you have a machine or rover that is in the middle of a job site with no trees, no obstructions, and it's seeing 17 satellites. In a perfect scenario, your base station would be somewhere on site where it's got a view to the sky and it's seeing those and tracking and using those same 17 satellites. That's perfect scenario. Worst case scenario is if you put your base station in a poor location, say your base station is near some obstructions, either uh, trees, buildings, earth, vehicles, whatever it may be, and half of the sky is blocked out. So now your base station is only seeing 10 satellites, as an example. Now your machine is still in the middle of the job site, seeing 17 satellites. But now because your base station is only seeing 10 satellites, your machine can only use those 10 satellites. So I hope that makes sense and makes it clear why the location of your base station in a good position and view to the sky is so critical because it can affect all your machines and rovers throughout the life cycle of your job site. So get this location right from the beginning and you can eliminate a lot of potential position errors. So when we say good visibility of the sky, what's most important is clear of any type of buildings, trees, vehicles, chain link fences that can um, either block the sky or maybe even distort that signal with multi-path and that distortion can happen when that signal from the satellites bounces off of hard objects and then the antenna picks it up and can get confused by that signal because it's distorted. So really critically you find that location with no um, limitations to the sky. Next we want to look at radio friendly. So we want to make sure wherever our base station is, depending on our radio type, that it's within range of our working range of our machines and rovers. So um, you got to understand um, what type of radios you're working with. So if you got that UHF radio we talked about or that 915 radio, 900 megahertz radio, they have different ranges. So you want to make sure you understand the range of your base station where you set your location also. And once again, that radio signal that must reach all machines and rovers on site, that radio signal can be distorted and interrupted by obstructions also. So you want to take that into consideration. And then the final part is 
simple and stable location. So we talked about the base station being in a known location. Once that known location is set, throughout the job life, that base station must continue to go in that exact known location every day. So you don't want it to move throughout the job. You don't want that permanent base pole to be bent, someone back into it. You don't want it to fall over. Um, you don't want it to be potentially in a job trailer where it, it sinks by a rain or the air pressure of the tires. You want to put this in a simple location that's going to be stable and being able to use on a daily basis. You got to consider um, that base station has some cost and you don't want it to uh, be in sight of people want to walk away with that thing. But also you want to make it easy to take it down and set up every day. All these things come into play when you take your time and think about the visibility of the sky, radio friendliness, and is it simple and stable. And if you think about all these things, it's a really easy process and your base station will keep you productive from day one to the end of your project. Finally, I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me and this is a, a basic overview. And if you'd like to learn more about base stations and Komatsu machine control, please contact your local Komatsu dealer. All of our dealers have a, a local technology solution experts that would help contractors set up their base station and their machines on a daily basis, or even go to our uh, Komatsu America website and learn more about our customer support programs in this link below. Thank you and have a great day.